So I'm gonna start off where I left off in my, in my last video. So I was talking about how consciousness and conscience are coexisting in the mind together and how once the consciousness gets awakened, it becomes its own entity and it forces your consciousness to acknowledge that it is not the only entity within your mind. And because most people is not accustomed to that to that to that phenomenon. Uh, and and it, because most people conscious has been silenced over the years by justified means for the actions and the deeds and the thoughts, they are not used to interacting with the conscience on a normal on my on a typical daily basis. So once they experience the phenomenon of another entity within the mind questioning them through either silent silent thoughts or true loud thoughts that sound like forces within their own mind because the 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 forces concept of mental illness is just loud thoughts that within your mind that's that sounds like a force to you so it's on awakening conscience um replaying scenarios from their past or making arguments about your current behavior and your current actions and deeds in like loud thought process it's like it's like supposedly reading a book within your own mind so when you read a book silently within your mind you can hear your own voice within your mind it's like a projection of your own thoughts and you can see you can hear it within your mind it sounds like a loud sound it sound like you talking to yourself or you reading something so it's it's very similar to that so once the awakening consciousness awakes it forces your conscience once the awakening conscience awake it forces your consciousness to the knowledge that it is not the only entity within your mind and if you haven't experienced that phenomenon before you're gonna become very paranoid, very anxious, very skeptical about reality and the things around you and about people because it's not something that you can make sense of within your physical reality. And it's not something that supposedly all the people are experiencing within your physical reality. So it's an experience that most people don't experience. And so they don't understand the concept at all. They don't understand the phenomenon at all. And because they don't understand the phenomenon, they really cannot acknowledge it. And so that's why medical science are supposed to behave the way it behaves when it comes to mental illness because everybody is not experiencing that same phenomenon. So to them, it's a it's an abstract concept that doesn't make sense within the physical reality, that cannot be proven within the physical reality, that cannot be verified within the physical reality. And so when you, when you, when you apply science to the concept there's no way for you to test it out because the only way to test is to test it out is if everybody was experiencing it and then everybody will have an understanding of what is going on but since there's no way to test it out in the physical reality medical science really cannot acknowledge it because it's a phenomenon that everybody not everyone is, is feeling so if you're talking to a medical doctor or medical therapist and they are not they have never experienced that phenomenon before they will not understand where you're coming from and they will think you are being very delirious but that reality is the reality in the design of the human mind because the human mind is is designed with a conscious and so the fact that the human mind is designed with a conscious means it's a possibility that they, uh, in some people's minds that conscience can be fully awakened and when a conscious become fully awakened when within mentally ill people mind, that's when mentally ill people become very delirious, they become very skeptical of life, they become very paranoid because they really don't know what is going on within their own body and within their own mind. And all the people around them don't understand what is going on too. So they really cannot help them and they really cannot talk to them and they really do not believe the things they are saying because it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to them within their own physical reality. Because for mentally ill people, most people experience reality through the senses, but for mentally ill people, they are working conscious. It's, a, it's another, another, another sense that they experience reality through that 
And so because it's another phenomenon that all people are not experiencing through the senses, it doesn't make sense to them. And their working conscience, once they awaken, it starts to, it starts to question you about your past, about skeptical things you've done in your past, about your, your desires, about your about your goals in life. It's try to question your consciousness about its motives on certain actions and certain deeds. And then, so this whole concept of mentally ill people feel like they are constantly being watched, or, or the thought process is constantly being shared around the globe, or the thoughts are being broadcasted. It's all because of this phenomenon within the mind that they're experiencing of awakening conscience. Because when a conscience awakens, your consciousness has to acknowledge that it has no privacy because every thought, something else is listening to it within your mind. Every thought, every every memory that that working conscious know everything about you because it has been a part of your consciousness from your your your, early, your childhood days your toddler days your teen days your adult days your, so it knows as everything about you because it knows everything within your consciousness and everything you ever you have ever experienced because it is it is a part of your consciousness so there's nothing you have done in life that your waking conscience does not know about. There's nothing you have done or acted on, no no hidden motive that it doesn't know about. So it supposedly knows everything about you. And because it knows everything about you, it knows, it knows your deepest thoughts, your deepest desire. You really cannot lie to it. So when it questions you on about your motive or question you about your actions you have to be honest with yourself and acknowledge them and so this whole phenomenon of people feeling like their thoughts are constantly being broadcasted around the globe is all because within the mind they're experiencing two entities within the mind they're experiencing the consciousness have acknowledged another entity that is coexisting within the minds another entity that they cannot have a talk with other entity being aware of it. And so mentally ill people constantly feel like the entire thought process, everybody around the world knows what's going on within the head because they rationalize the, the phenomenon to either a divine entity or the devil or they rationalize the phenomenon to a human organization like the government supposedly using a, 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 a technology to hack the brain and oversee all the thoughts and stuff like that. And so those are the three things within our physical reality that mentally ill people most likely associate that phenomenon to. And even the concept of what's it called of even the concept of the whole the you against the world is supposedly is supposedly keen for that keen for that phenomenon because when you're experiencing that, you can't. You feel like nobody around you is trustworthy. You feel like everybody is in a collusion against you because your thoughts are constantly being broadcasted to everybody else's mind. So they know everything you're supposedly thinking. As soon as you think it, they know all. They know everything you want to do in life and stuff like that. So you become very paranoid and you become very uh, distraught in your thought process and you become very skeptical of human beings because you feel like. Nobody around you is being honest with you because it's supposed to be in your head, listening to all your thoughts and all your and all your and re, and re, reliving all your memories and stuff like that. So you feel like the entire world is supposed to be prosecuting you because everybody in the world is supposed to be in this great collusion against you and stuff like that. And so that far mental ill people become very delirious. That far some mental ill people talk to themselves because supposedly when you're if a waking conscience keep talking to you within your own mind, some people respond back to it in different ways. And so they talk to themselves, they either talk to themselves out loud or you see them laughing out loud. When they're laughing out loud, it's something that is it's because there's things going on within the mind that is making them laugh. And so you see them laughing out loud and doing other things too. So that whole concept of your conscience being awakened it's supposedly the concept mentally mental illness is designed around. And 
the one thing medical science really do not understand is the fact that medications really cannot get rid of that concept. Medi and because and also because medication affects the mind, it also has trickle down side effects on the body because the mind controls almost all of your bodily function. So if your mind is constantly being medicated and jammed, that you're gonna feel that effects throughout your body because your mind supposedly is the one supposed that supposed to control your bodily function. So if your mind is not healthy and it's constantly being medicated, your body is not gonna feel right. And so most mentally ill people, you will still eat when they're on antipsychotic, they will either feel like sad or depressed and stuff like that. And that could also be associated with the medications and its effects on the mind because the mind is supposed to be the overseer of your body. And also another thing that medical science has to understand, apart from the medication not being supposed to be the solution, is the fact that just because you are not experiencing something doesn't mean it's a figment of somebody else's imagination because most of our concept came from that same mentally ill thought process. Um, the concept of God and the devil supposedly came from that concept, from that same phenomenon because the person that wrote about the devil was most likely experiencing the exact same thing. And so, and because he read it, and because he or she read it when they associate with anything within a reality, they have to associate with something greater. And so they either, that's how the concept of God came into the system most likely, and the concept of a devil came into the system. Because if you associate certain aspects of it to God, and you're, and you're feeling like negative, negative aspect of it, you're going to feel like, okay, if God is responsible for the positive one, then there has to be something responsible for the negative aspect of it too. And so that is basically how that concept of God and supposedly the devil most likely came to assist him for that abnormal phenomenon that somebody was experiencing in the Asian days. And so another thing I want to add to it, just because you're experiencing those things, it doesn't mean that you supposedly you are completely broken forever and you cannot make a full recovery and be and live and live a functional life and live a productive life within society. It is indeed possible. But you first, you have to understand and study your own body and try to understand what is going on. And I, that is basically what I did. Um, because when I first experienced the phenomenon, I was, I was, I was ignorant about it. I was, I didn't know what was going on with me. So my, I also assumed it was uh, either the government trying to hack my mind or have this technology to hack my mind and was messing with my thought process and stuff like that. And I also remember like in 2016 that I supposedly when I went to the hospital and I had my medic breakdown, I, I remember making videos talking about how my life was in danger and the government was after me, was trying to harm me. And those videos was all because of how I was experiencing within my mind, the phenomena of my consciousness being forced to acknowledge another entity within my mind. And the phenomenon of my of that entity questioning my all my actions, all my deeds from for my past, replaying memories and questioning me why I did certain things and why I did those and why I did another thing and stuff like that. So this whole concept of mental illness just being madness and fake my people imagination, that whole idea has to get questioned terribly because there is a possibility of a conscience being awakened based on the fact that most human beings have a conscience within the 21st century. And most human beings experience the effects of a conscience when they do certain things. And the effect of a conscience is like that, that unnatural instinct or unnatural phenomenon that you that question your actions on certain things. And just, so if that is happening within normal people's minds, then normal people cannot discredit that that phenomenon can also be happening within mentally ill people's minds too, but on a different scale. And that is basically what mentally ill people are experiencing, the exact same phenomenon, but on a, on a more complex scale. And the more complex scale is just that 
entity, the conscience, just being fully awakened to the point that it can have conversations with the consciousness, with your own consciousness, and it can have, and it can create thoughts and concepts too, because it's fully awakened. It can think thoughts and concepts without you thinking thoughts and concepts. And they can think thoughts and ideas and connect things within your mind and connect things to your memories and stuff like that to question you. So the whole concept of mental illness just being fake my people's imagination, that concept, and I believe in medical science, that whole belief need to be questioned because there is physical scientific evidence of to support mental illness and the physical scientific evidence, the fact that the human consciousness exists within your mind and the human and within that mind is also a conscience. And so there is supposedly two entities within your mind. So even though you might not be experiencing the conscience being fully awakened and on another and having complex ideas and concepts to question you, the fact that you still experience the conscience once in a while when you do stuff and you still experience something Question your question your actions and your deeds if forcing your consciousness to acknowledge to to question your own your its own action and deeds means that there is scientific biological biological proof based off the design of the human mind for mental illness. And another thing I wanted to say too was before I end this end this video was that just because you don't, you don't, just because you're not experiencing something, it doesn't mean you should just displace that madness because if you displace that madness and you're not even willing to consider that idea or consider that thought might be possible, it just, it's effect, it, 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 it has a negative effect on the person that's experiencing it because it makes that person feel like what they're experiencing is not true and what they're experiencing really is not reality when the human consciousness is designed to perceive reality through your senses. So if a human consciousness is telling you that I'm hearing voices in my head, that human consciousness is most likely experiencing something through its senses that doesn't make sense to it. People, most of the time, people do not say they're experiencing something that they have never experienced within the physical reality before. Which means their human consciousness is a rational consciousness. It's not an illiterate consciousness. It's a rational consciousness that perceives reality through a rational perspective. Your body is just a vessel for consciousness to perceive reality through its senses. And is and is designs. So if a if you when you look yourself in the mirror, you don't you don't you don't tell yourself, I am my brain, I am my hand, I am my eyes, I am my nose. When you look yourself in the mirror, consciousness and knowledge itself as that entire body. But if you go into the concept deeper. And you look yourself in the mirror, you actually see consciousness acknowledging yourself to a vessel. Oh, uh, I'm black. Oh, I'm white. Oh, I have green eyes. Oh, I have blue eyes. It's consciousness acknowledging itself to the physical vessel. It is perceiving reality true. And because consciousness is able to acknowledge rational concepts, and consciousness is able to acknowledge rational, 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 what's it called? Rational constructs and laws and stuff like that. It means consciousness is a rational entity. And a rational entity cannot, will not tell you it's experiencing something that it's not experiencing within the physical reality. People lie, that is true. But when somebody is telling you that I am not, I don't feel safe, I'm fearful for my life, 
a few I'm being watched. A few my thoughts are being broadcasted around the globe. There has to be a reason that person is telling you that those things. And those things in consciousness have to have have to have certain experiences to be able to explain what is going on. And so at the end of the day, medical science, you also have to acknowledge that just because you're not just because something is not supposedly testable within your within the physical reality because everybody is not supposedly experiencing and see phenomena doesn't mean it is complete madness. That's all for now.